Hi, my name is Mukul. I took GMAT coaching from top 1% and I have around 6 years of experience building edtech uh, in India. I just wanted to get a little bit uh, understanding about what your GMAT journey was end to end. Like how did you come into it? What initiated this? Sure. So uh, for me, GMAT journey started with uh, my dream of getting in top MBA, uh, let's say from India or abroad. Probably I wanted to go to top 10 uh, B schools and that's how my MBA journey started. Uh, and that's when GMAT became a very big hurdle in my entire journey. Like, you know, without cracking GMAT, uh, you actually can't think of getting into MBA school or anything, right? So uh, that's why I wanted to really crack GMAT. I was a little scared of cons. Uh, overall, I think all three sections uh, I was really not good at. But however, quant was something which I was really scared about. I took uh, the self-paced, uh, you know, uh, course from top 1% in the month of uh, February. I started my journey with that, but I think it was very undisciplined, indisciplined and inconsistent uh, initially for around a couple of, uh, you know, weeks. And uh, that's when I realized, you know, I left my job when I was uh, preparing for GMAT and uh, that's when I realized, you know, this is something which is not going to help me and uh, I started pushing myself uh, with a lot of motivation coming in from uh, Nodi World videos of top 1%. And uh, I enrolled in the top intensive batch as well. Uh, and I think post that the journey started uh, in a really fun, fun and a nice way. I started preparing initially for six to eight hours per day and eventually stretched it to around 12 hours per day with long sittings of three hours each, four times in a day. And with which I think I was able to crack my GMAT and got my perfect or let's say you can call it dream score uh, in GMAT. So yeah. We have the understanding that your journey was very different and difficult. Yeah. You, know, when yeah. you, were you can call it in some way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so can you uh, tell us more about your journey, how you prepared, what were the difficulties you faced? Yeah. So I want to bring a very uh, point around, you know, how sometimes, let's say, uh, you know, unfair the world is. I live in a town called, uh, you know, Hathras with, and not even Hathras, let's say 20 kilometers away uh, from the main city land. And there, I think we don't have access to Wi-Fi, uh, you know, electricity is also very, uh, you know, uh, subpar availability of electricity as well. And on top of it, uh, there was so much of heat, like uh, in the month of April, May, when my preparation was at peak, I think a uh, lot of days, the temperature was touching 50, 49, 48 degrees Celsius. Uh, in, and on top of it, like no electricity and no uh, great facilities like air condition or anything like that. I was typically studying in a fan uh, sitting. And of course, sometimes my uh, laptop itself used to give up, like, you know, oh, shut down, especially when I used to uh, go to the live classes of Sandeep sir, I think uh, laptop itself used to get crashed. A lot of times used to uh, parallelly join from my mobile as well, ki agar ye band ho gaya to I'll switch to mobile. So that kind of, it was filled uh, with these kind of difficulties, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, in the heat, line, I mean, it's very difficult to study, uh, especially when you don't have a proper atmosphere or let's say, you know, culture or let's say ecosystem to study and do things. But I think intrinsic motivation and some help from the top 1% eventually, uh, you know, took me to this particular phase where I scored the dream score. So this intrinsic motivation that you're talking about that's coming from top, what was it about Sandeep sir and about top that you know really helped you which you think you could have found somewhere else? Yeah, I think uh, Sandeep sir pushing us very very hard about uh, you know uh, getting the you know getting into the top 1% club right. Yeah. Even in the Know The World videos he talks about uh, a lot about it like you know how do you actually become a top 1% in the world, not in India, not in your state, not in your school, but let's say how do you become top 1% in, in the world in the, uh, you know, at a global level. And that's where my dream or let's say my aspirations are. I always wanted to get to the top 1%, uh, you know, and that name also resonates and uh, yeah. So that's where I think top held, uh, basically pushing me uh, beyond my limits, pushing those boundaries across. You must have faced a lot of demotivation, demoralization during Absolutely, your, yeah. that's part of so, our journey, especially with the GMAT takers, right? So uh, how did, uh, your, did you reach out to your facilitators at top 1%? Did you reach out to Sandeep sir? No, I, did, I wasn't like actually touch with a lot of uh, people from top, yeah, yeah. especially Priyansha and uh, 
uh, you know some more people like natasha ma'am and everyone and i think each one of them was super helpful in my entire journey pushing me again and again whenever i had doubts the email support is great you generally get reply within let's say 6 to 8 hours maximum but typically in 2 to 3 hours sort of a time duration and that's how i think the entire team was really helpful uh, in cracking my gmail so when you started your journey and then when you were preparing while you were preparing did you imagine that you would actually crack the 100 percent time no way i was always aiming uh, or let's say I, i always used to pray to god like you know somehow 715 karwa do you know <laughs> let me get that 715 sort yeah. of a score uh, which is let's say you know first step or let's say first score in 100 percent tile club i always dream of uh, you know getting 715 but i think with a lot of my hard work and the right coaching right direction i scored 745 you you shared that uh, you always were a little bit worried about quantity yeah whereas yeah. when it comes to gmat most people are worried about verbal yeah you know yeah. so what was your prep for both these concepts and then then di came into the picture like how do you tackle all of these and what were your hurdles in core gmat concepts no i think sana you touched upon a right uh, you know point about uh, you know entire preparation journey yeah. of my gmat very uh, specifically if i talk about quants i would have prepared my own notes of around 45 to 50 pages right. which i used to revise each and every day uh, consistently like in my last 60 days of my preparation i think uh, like if i am starting my study let's say at 6 pm in the evening uh, initial 30 minutes or 25 minutes are just blocked, let's say, to revise this entire booklet of my formula slash theory, whatever I have noted from the videos of the top versus the, you know, booklets that are given to us. Yeah. You just basically revise that in and out every day. So just imagine doing this particular activity consistently, revising the same topic, same content in and out every day for around 45 to 60 days. Yeah. I think that just simply gets Xeroxed in your brain. So that is something, uh, you know, very helpful trick which I got from, uh, let's say, top 1% or let's say, overall, uh, you know, uh, in my quants journey, I think that's something which really helped me. That's one. The second point about, let's say, you know, verbal or let's say overall RC and CR, I think you have to level up your uh, reading ability skills, like, you know, how fast or let's say, how well can you understand uh, what passage or a question is trying to say. If you can probably answer those two things, uh, you know, I think verbal is going to be easy. Very specifically, RC was little easy for me. That was one section which I was really confident about because I was always an avid reader. I used to read a lot of books like fictional to love stories to Dan Browns of the world. Yes. So, uh, you know, that way RC was quite easy. Yeah. But if I talk about CR, I think not at all, uh, you know, I can replicate the same logic because uh, I think and I solved CR, uh, you know, very mathematical way. Mm -hmm. Like as in I, uh, you know, with top, I think they have given us a lot of formulas, uh, you know, for each of the eight categories of CR questions. Okay. And uh, again, very similar logic of what I did with quants. I had made my own notes and revising those notes each and, our, each and every page every day. So those again, those formulas are in your brain like, yeah. right? Uh, so that way, uh, I think when I read a CR questions, it's all about then applying those formulas very, uh, you know, very specifically, let's say the way we solve it in uh, quants or let's say in your mathematics. So that way, I think I cracked very easily the uh, this piece of uh, GMAT as well, which is CR and RC. And uh, in terms of DI, a lot of people are very worried because if you get one question wrong, the whole set is gone. So, did confidence in your concepts or how do you tackle DI questions? I think uh, DI, I wouldn't say is about concepts or anything else. I think DI is all about can you, uh, you know, keep calm while solving DI. So I think DI is all about, uh, you know, how focused are you at that particular given point, like while you're actually into the exam and solving those questions and uh, how calm is your brain overall like if you're really at peace uh, if your brain is at ease you can easily crack uh, di uh, the answers are most of time in just front of you you just have to do simple uh, calculation like you know some plus and minus or let's say some division and multiplication here and there but otherwise uh, you know if you solve it at uh, ease i think you can crack it and that's where i want to bring your attention towards uh, uh, top portal the mock portal which is given to uh, you know us let's say a top one person I think that particular entire portal is designed in a way that, uh, you know, if you do it in a right way, uh, GMAT will be, like the DI section of GMAT will be really a cakewalk. So what were some factors or tips and tricks that made all the difference, or, you know, that those which yeah. helped you yeah. cross the threshold of that 99 percentile and reach the perfect score? 
So yes. what were those? Yeah, the 90th percentile is very easy, but like the 90th to 99th, the 100th journey is the toughest. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, if I summarize my entire GMAT uh, preparation journey in couple of words, I think it's gonna be long sitting. Uh, like the more long sittings and better long sittings that you can do, uh, you know, you will be really at ease. Second is about how calm and uh, you know how can you ease your uh, you know entire ecosystem around you, like your brain, your body, in and out, everything, etc. And that's where long sittings helps. Uh, like you know, your body and brain has to be equipped enough to sit, uh, let's say for for around two and a half hour continuously at its two hundred percent of its productivity. And that won't happen on just, uh, let's say, if you just wake up tomorrow and uh, appear for exam and it won't just happen randomly. You'll have to prepare for it. And I think long setting is something that really helps in that particular sense. Second is uh, your uh, overall confidence, your motivation, why you really want to do GMAT, why do you really want to take this uh, so much of pain around GMAT slash your MBA, so much of money and in and out everything. If you're really clear about your, uh, let's say, goals, perspective, why you want to do, what you want to do, I think then journey becomes a little easier. Uh, so yeah, and then if you're really confident about your concepts, your base, the theory, in and out, everything, if you're really good with it, I think uh, things will be really uh, good. And I wish everyone all the very best in their GMAT journey. Crack it and get to the top 1%. So why would you suggest people to join top 1%? Purely and purely because of the mock portal, uh, like it, it simulates almost the real GMAT. Uh, second, I think because of the good question bank that we get, right? And on the third and the biggest factor, I think because of Sandeep sir as well. So, yeah. Because of Sandeep sir, yeah, correct.